Hello. Thank you so much for joining me today. I'm excited. I've been waiting to react to this for a long time. How I see the US after living in Europe for five years by David Wen. Go check him out, link down below. I saw this the day it was posted, I think. I saw it go up. And I don't like to react to stuff for a long time, you know, like usually a year after it's posted, and it's been a year. So I'm finally reacting to this. How I see the US after living in Europe for five years. Check him out, link down below. Okay, I'm prepared, let's go. I mean, sorry. <laughs> I should say it has almost three million views. Crazy. I just had a nightmare that I had to choose between 40 brands of toilet paper. Just go with Charmin. It wasn't a nightmare. This is the US. <laughs> I always enjoy... <laughs> okay. Interesting critique. Coming back to the US to see family. Wow, that's beautiful. Friends, nature. The nature is unbeatable, especially in a place like California. But living in the U.S. is sort of like living in one big Hollywood movie. Honestly, I don't think of the U.S. as being that beautiful, but that's just because I live in Indiana. It's an experience. The good, the bad, and the ugly. And after four years in Europe, I'm back in the U.S. at the moment. So let me show you how I see the U.S. now. It's time to do Here some grocery go. shopping. And of course, <laughs> I hop in my car and drive two blocks to my local supermarket. And why walk when one can drive? Grocery shopping is an experience, an adventure. You see, I'm used to only one or two choices of brands to choose from in the Netherlands. Here, there are like 50 brands of- Okay, I'm curious, what do we got here? I mean, I can't read this, but of course, the four equals six rolls. That's how it is with every roll of toilet paper now. It's like 13 equals 12, three equals 19, two equals one. They're always trying to say, this roll isn't one roll. It's 12 rolls. Anyway, extra long versus... This one's just extra. They're both the same brand. This one's just extra. Okay. There's a brand to choose from in the Netherlands. That does make it simple. Here? There are like 50 brands of everything to choose from, from toilet paper to sausages to coffee. Let's see, hazelnut, maple pecan. I'm gonna go with caramel spice this time. On one hand, the okay. variety is amazing. On the other, it can take me up to 15 minutes to buy toilet paper. And I'll <laughs> Come on, usually, at a certain point in your life, you have your toilet paper kind of on lock. You figured it out. You know which one you like. <laughs> or you're like me and you don't care. You just buy the cheapest one. But okay, okay, I get his point. I see his point. No. Do you know about our national treasure, Costco? At Costco, you'll hmm. find anything and everything in the extra, extra, extra large. Everything really is bigger in the US. Plus the free samples <laughs> and the cheap hot dogs. Even going to Costco for me, I've only ever been like two times. And I, I, I even find it kind of funny because everything in there is like triple the normal size. And yes, unlimited drink refills. Yes. This is a Wow, there we go. Now that is what I want representing America right here. <clears throat> Doesn't that look good? America. Holy crap, the selection is crazy. And, and while it's really nice to come back and see all this variety in the supermarkets from Safeway to Costco to Trader Joe's, it can be sometimes overwhelming when you have every single possible combination of coffee, toilet paper, and it can take me up to 20 minutes to buy a bag of chips. And the thing about... <laughs> come on. Okay. All right. I mean, hey. When they do come out with some new flavors, like new Dorito flavors, I do sit there for minutes debating my options. Do I want the old, faithful, the original, just normal nacho cheese? Or do I want this weird-ass flavor? 
free soda refills while i still love the concept and i loved it as a child it's correction i don't love the concept i love free wonder what he means by that i can say i do love the concept of free refills i've never known it any other way i don't think i think once something is like free and unlimited it's hard to hard to go to to you know be happy with it any other way if that makes sense <laughs> it's actually not so free because it's obviously it's not good for you though when it costs you in the long run in terms of your health it's time to go meet some friends for that's lunch. true and on the way there and it's also not really free just because obviously they're making a profit on it so they're baking the price of the average amount of refills into, you know, whatever else you're eating. But still, as someone who drinks a lot of soda, I'm well above that average, so I think I get a good deal. <laughs> I see them. Oh my, what is friends it? for lunch. And on the way there, I see them. Oh my, it's always a shock, the homeless. This is the part that Hollywood never shows. But life goes on. It's part of everyday life in a big city. I feel like it's only getting worse now, too. But I am looking forward to lunch and the food scene in the U.S. It's a pretty, um, hmm, what's the right word for it? I don't know. Just an interesting dichotomy to see. Like a homeless, homeless encampment on a, you know, a beautiful modern city. And then you have... Uh, a homeless encampment on it. Yeah, sad, very sad. From Asian to Mexican to everything in between, there is something mm. for everyone. And fast food everywhere, every block, hmm. every mall, <laughs> every day. No wonder everyone is so big. <laughs> Damn, I already gained 20 pounds. Oh my God, <laughs> that's crazy. <laughs> but I know I will lose it all when I get back to the Netherlands. And during lunch, my friend mentions her son had an... I mean, that's a lot. No offense to this guy, but 20 pounds? Wow, that is crazy. That really, that really says something. He moved here and gained 20 pounds. Allergic reaction. Went to the emergency room. Luckily, he was fine, but they received a bill for $20,000. <sighs> and then my other friend tells me about the time he fainted, got transported to the ER, and was handed a $10,000 bill. It yeah. definitely makes one think twice before deciding to go to the ER. And then we talk about work. Uh, yeah. Which is the most American thing to talk about. And he tells me casually, it's fine. Same old, same old. Had to work this past weekend. Still working 60 hours a week. And I think to myself, if I ever decide to return back to the US, I think it would be quite difficult for me to adapt back to the American way of life, culture in terms of working, the number of hours, the stress, the lack of vacation, the fact that people don't take- What did he just say? Lack of vacation? The stress, the lack of vacation. Oh, the lack of vacation. I thought that was some kind of weird word I'd never heard before. Lack of vacation, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's always, it's very interesting hearing people talk about this more and more because I never realized it was, you know, anything different like and obviously living here growing up here seeing my dad work 10 hour days five days a week i never knew it was um, unusual and the fact that people don't take their vacation days but i do miss parts of american work culture the drive the ambition the energy being surrounded by people who are very ambitious ambitious about their careers, it mm. drove me to become a better person, a more confident person. And to be honest, I do miss that because that is part of my DNA growing up in the US. But it's a trade-off, right? It's a trade-off between, yes, you do make a lot more money in the US, but the trade-off is- mm. Okay, all right. This is definitely a very interesting flip side right here that he's talking about. Okay. It's time. And then we start talking about vacation. 
Another friend tells me about his jam-packed one-week vacation visiting four countries. And I was like, how is that possible? Four countries, one week? Then I remember. That's how I used to travel as well. <laughs> and that's the thing, right? When you don't have that much time, you learn to pack everything in. I remember when I was traveling to Europe during my first time. I mean, I guess like when all the countries are touching each other, it's like if you went to... I mean, even going to four states, though, here in America in one week would be pretty crazy. Yeah, that's pretty crazy no matter how you cut it. That sounds kind of stressful. <laughs> it's like a, a race. I wonder what four countries, you know, unless they're all like he's at the intersection of all four countries and he's just got to cross the border like this. I'm sure it would be fun, though, obviously. I traveled to 10 countries in two weeks because, wow. well, when you only have two weeks, you learn to pack everything in. I had this Google Sheets, the agenda every day from 7 a.m. to 10 p.m. Every hour had an agenda, something to do. And that's the thing, right? When you travel so far to Europe, to Asia, from the U.S., and you only have one, two. Okay, now I understand what he's saying. He's saying that his American friend is going on a one-week vacation and he crammed in four countries. That actually makes more sense. I see what he's saying now. I thought we were talking about his European friend or something. No, that makes sense. Okay, if you're going to Europe, yeah, you're trying to cram it all in. You don't know how many times you're going to get to go over there. So you're like, all right, I got to hit up France and Spain and the UK and, you know, Germany and... Yeah. Personally, I probably wouldn't do it that way because it just sounds too stressful. But it makes sense that that, that yeah, people do that two weeks you better make the most out of your time now let's get back to paying the bill but wait what the hell is this sales tax tip madness <laughs> i need to walk off this madness and the lunch i walk towards stanford university which is nearby i walk and i walk and then i realize that i'm now restaurants are starting to add on another fee this happened to me for the first time ever um a couple weeks ago the service fee a 5% fee snuck on there at the end of the bill, right by the tax, called the service fee. Um, for the service. The only person walking. Oh wow, it's a lot further than I thought. No wonder nobody walks in the US. I just took that amount, that 5%, and took that out of what I was gonna tip. So, jokes on them, kind of. Actually, I guess the joke is on their waiter because now basically part of what would have gone as a tip to their waiter is going back to the owner. Anyway, I need to focus. Oh, wow. It's a lot further than I thought. No, I'm the only person walking. <laughs> oh, wow. It and I walk. I, walk I, I was so, oh my gosh. I need to focus on what this guy's doing. Towards Stanford University, which is nearby. I walk and I walk. And then I realized that I'm the only person walking. Oh, wow. It's a lot further than I thought. No wonder nobody walks in the US. I arrived at campus to see a bunch of tourists. American universities, especially elite ones, are tourist hotspots. The brand name, the letters, the cost of tuition. It's one of the biggest Ooh. businesses in the US. And then I overhear some people talking about the most recent mass shooting. A mass shooting at an American school in suburban Denver. We are 25 days in, and there have been 40 mass shootings. It seems like this is the norm nowadays in the US. It's sad, and it's horrible. And oh yeah, the police? They beat up someone else again. What's sad is that many people no longer trust the police. And I know plenty <laughs> of great police officers. But all it takes is a few bad apples to ruin it for the rest of them. Now I wonder what the news outlets are saying because I've stopped reading the news. It's like this all-out war, CNN versus Fox. <laughs> yeah, especially, especially now that the election's coming up. It's all happening again, folks. It's the election season. Time to fire up the propaganda machine. You got two different stories. When my son, Brian, died in a drunk driving accident. Seems like such a divided country nowadays. The left versus the right. Democrats versus Republicans. The police versus the world. 
And this is the thing that always shocks me. It's not getting any better. Me when I come back now, how divided the country has become. You're telling me it's not like this in other countries? That might be like the single mm, biggest reason to leave the USA. Just how toxic the political environment is. It's so old. I'm, it's so, I'm so sick of it. I mean, you can literally lose a friend because of politics. The, yeah. the media has done a role in pitting this group versus this group as well. And it's sad because it doesn't seem so united anymore. It seems mm -hmm. quite divided uh, every time I come back. And it's mm. sad. The divided states of America. And the thing about yeah. the police, well, the police, they have such a bad reputation now when in fact, they should be part of the community protecting people. And yes, there have been very unfortunate events that have happened. But when I think <laughs> about the majority of the police officers that I have met in the past, hmm. they've been good people, genuinely good people. And nowadays we tend to... Yeah, I think that's just a really complicated... It's such a complicated subject. An interesting one on all sorts of different spectrums. You know what I mean? I mean, there's people on extremes of both sides. And sometimes extremists on both sides agree. They both hate the police, you know what I mean? For totally different reasons. One might be like anarchists that just believe there should be no police. The other, you know, Democrats that think they should uh, defund the police for totally different reasons. It's all very interesting. Um, and of course, police are like any other people where some of them are horrible and some are not. It's definitely different. It's probably a very difficult country to police because the populace is all armed. So the way they train is basically just to assume you're armed, which results in some very bad outcomes sometimes. To label people based on this profession, it's a bias. When in fact, I think it's wrong to do that. I think we should judge people based on their character, not on a label that we attach them to. But yeah, I hope things get better. I don't think so in the short term, but I hope things get better. But hey, at least public restrooms are still free in the U.S. It's time to head to the mall to do... <laughs> <laughs> that was... <laughs> Good point. Hey. Balances it out. I do love free public restrooms. I mean, not that they're nice. They're not nice, but when you need it, you appreciate it. Do some shopping and say hello to American consumerism. An overly friendly I'm kind of surprised bathrooms are free in America. You know what I mean? That's just, you would think it would be the other way around. You know, you guys have like free healthcare, free college, but you don't got free bathrooms. What the heck? When you gotta go, you gotta go. And you would also think that like with how corporate America is, Walmart would wanna charge you to use the bathroom. But in reality, Walmart doesn't want you leaving just because you have to use the bathroom. So they make it free. So that you don't leave. <laughs> Do some shopping and say hello to American consumerism and overly friendly customer service people. Shopping in the US is sort of like a game. Looking for deals, getting credit card points. It can be extremely fun and addicting. But this is all part of the game of American consumerism. So be careful, or else you'll be in credit card debt like a dirt of Americans. Well, it's late and it's time to head home. And of course, there's traffic at 3 p.m. And this guy ahead of me just cut off the cyclist. It's quite a shock to see bikes, cars, buses, motorcycles all merging together on one lane. It can <laughs> be quite dangerous to cycle in an American city. I then go and meet some friends for- Yeah, because a lot of times people aren't even considering that you might be there. They don't even think for a drink and I meet all these techies and of course I get asked the popular question hey so what do you do I make YouTube videos 
Oh, so you work for YouTube and Google, right? No, I just make videos. Oh, okay. So this is something that Americans do really well. We tend to compare ourselves against one another. It's a very competitive society. And we do this at a very young age. Which school, which college did you go to? What type of job, <laughs> which company, who got promoted? It's the whole which college did you go to thing is definitely a thing. But my whole life, I've always been so against that for some reason. I don't even really know why, but just my whole life, I have... There's something about that that just feels nasty, like gross to, you know, to respect someone more for what college they could afford to attend. Or, you know, oh, you got good grades in high school, so you got into that college or whatever. I just... So I actually, because of that, I don't even know the names of, like, almost any colleges here in America. People will talk about colleges. I'm like, I don't even know what you're talking about. I know like Harvard and Stanford and a couple others. But I out of, out of everyone I know, I know by far the least amount of colleges, which is random, but that's true. It's part of the system. It's a very competitive society, in my opinion, compared to other societies. Hmm. And I remember there was one time when I first started off my career, I was working in the big four accounting firm. And I went out to a bar with some friends. They were all investment bankers. And I was talking to this one girl who was an investment banker. And of course, we talked about what we did. And when I told her that I worked in a big four firm, she kind of looked down upon me and said something very judgmental like oh you only work at a big four company and so i just what does that even mean how can you be judgmental that someone huh is not like the opposite of what i'm so confused that's like saying oh i work yeah i went to school at harvard oh you only went to school to at harvard it's like the opposite of what I was just saying. What, is, what does this mean? Oh, you only work at a big four company. And so I just remember feeling very crappy at that point in time, like I wasn't good enough. Uh, but I, I don't blame her. It's the system that we grow up in. And we tend to judge each other. I'm sorry, I'm confused. Isn't the big four referring to like the big four financial institutions like wealth, Wells Fargo, the big four banks? Bank of America, Wells Fargo in America. If you work at one of those, wouldn't that be something to brag about? Why would that be? Oh, you only work. <laughs> As opposed to what? I must be missing. So I don't know. I don't know. Based on what we do. What a long, exhausting day. Just another day in Hollywood. Just another day in the US of A. <laughs> I could do. Wow. That was a great video. That was really insightful as to what it's like in, in America. No, insightful. Um, to have someone who lived outside America come back and and kind of have a new perspective on it and share that. That's really cool. I wonder if he's still living here or if he went back to the Netherlands. Go check out his channel. Why I choose a simple Dutch life as an American. Looks like he's back in the Netherlands. <laughs> awesome. All right. Thank you for watching. I'll see you guys tomorrow.